I think we're starting. I hope we're starting. Is it, uh, is it on yet, Michelle? Hello, um, Bromaken girl. Miss Gowan Redfeather, Bromaken girl, and uh, Byron. Jacob is in. How are you? Jeff. Hi, everybody. It's going to be quite an interesting show today. I'm actually going to just close my video off so I don't see that lag. Um, how are you all? I've got cameras all over the place. I don't know where to look. Got myself a lovely cup of coffee. Today's show is dedicated to uh, Emily Rose. Emily Rose is a, um, a subscriber of mine's uh, young daughter. She's, um, she can't eat, uh, she can't digest. Uh, lactose or she likes uh, she has to have dairy free so it's all about dairy free today we'll be talking a little bit about the whys and wants of, of dairy free so if that interests you if it doesn't interest you there's still some fantastic recipes going on today uh, dairy free or not they are really good so how are you all hello Jan hi Amo Tara good to see you in Tara Lip tarts. I can hardly say say hi to that um, to that name. But anyway, welcome, Mr. Gumball. Franchel, Borges, how are you in Brazil? Is it Franchel? 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 I think. Let's low down. I think we might have to hire that up again, Michelle. We did this last time. We have to find a way of getting that um, camera up a little bit higher so I'm not sort of stooping down to you all. So we'll just find something to uh, raise that up. We are going to make a beautiful, delicious, traditional rice pudding today. Um, and trust me, if you haven't had a real old style traditional rice pudding with a bit of a twist, we're going to make it dairy free. It is gorgeous. Um, Michelle's just looking. How about the upside of that uh, fruit bowl there, Michelle? Just um, tip them on the floor. That'll be fine. <laughs> Got some wonderful, wonderful, um, uh, oh, what are they called, Michelle? Passion fruits. Passion and I, fruits. And I didn't tip them on the floor. So didn't tip them on the floor. Let's bring that up. Michelle's going to just check if we're on the right height on the camera. Yeah. Are we all good? Can I see you all? Yeah, that's I'm good. Melissa from Ontario, Canada. Bonjour. Uh, bienvenue, Josan. Oh, my, my head's gone blank. Byron, help me out with the languages, man. Look at that coffee. So, as I say, this is dedicated to Emily Rose. I said a long time ago to uh, a, a subscriber called Steve that I would do some um, uh, dairy free recipes, some delicious dairy free recipes. So, today is all about. Emily Rose, but it's also dedicated to anybody out there that um, is dairy, uh, has a dairy-free diet, diet, or is um, uh, in any way unable to digest lactose. The pudding, it tastes so good. We're actually going to be using coconut milk to make this. It's, it's kind of inspired from some of the Asian dishes that I've discovered as we've traveled around Southeast Asia. Um, so, but it's done in the traditional style of the, um, what I would call an English um, rice pudding. So slowly cooked and uh, very delicious. We're also going to be making that real classic creme caramel. Now I've been experimenting with creme caramels. Um, I love a creme cam caramel or a creme brulee even with the sugars on top. But um, I've been experimenting with a version that is dairy free. I'm going to show you how to make that. I made some earlier on. They take quite a while to set, so I'll be showing you in the show what they taste like and, and how they come out. We might do some extra bits and we'll have a little chat with you all. And just uh, if you've got any questions, you can throw them up. Michelle is um, is here with me, of course, and she'll be checking the chat. If I miss anything, hopefully she'll she'll pick on. Just say good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so hi, Melissa. Um, Reverse remix of random awesomeness. Steve, you're a great cook and I really like your pancakes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Raggy, how are you, buddy? You're in? Yes, I've improved my, my internet, Raggy, so uh, hopefully the sounds are all good. Um, 
we are what is amazing about a, a, a rice pudding by the way is just how little maybe michelle will bring the camera down so we got there just how little rice that you need to make a decent size rice pudding is that on camera now yeah we've got the camera angles good yeah so this is a pudding rice it's actually an arborio rice we're using here but they're very similar they're a short grained rice they absorb all the flavors really well we've only got um Probably looks about half a cup there, it's 70 grams. I'm not sure what that is in, in ounces. Michelle, it's about two ounces, two and a half ounces. Yeah. And um, it, it's gonna make this lovely, uh, it's gonna fill this whole bowl up with the rice pudding and we're gonna have a nice skin on top. So I'll be showing you how to make that. And we will get going very shortly. I just wanna say hello to everybody. Greetings from Croatia. Uh, Davor, Karamatic. Karamatic. I love Croatia, uh, Davor. We've been there with our family uh, a couple of times. I've driven all down the coast. It is absolutely, what a gorgeous place, all that rocky coastline. Uh, Dubrovnik is, um, I think, where we stopped in the end in Dubrovnik for a short time. That was beautiful. If you haven't been to Croatia and you've been to Italy, just go to Croatia. It's, it's, a whole different, it's a whole different world. Are we back up on the camera? Yeah. Yeah, yes. do they? Shraggy's Ask, it says, do you know this is the only live stream I watch? Oh, buddy, that's very kind of you. Should get my ukulele out, play a little tune for you. <laughs> Don't know if I've got it with me, Raggy. Don't think I have, actually. Um, so Tara says hello to Michelle. Hello, Tara. The lip tarts are saying, what kind of rice is that? It is an arborio rice, actually, but it's uh, if I, normally I would be using what we would call a pudding rice. It's a short grain rice, very similar to the rice you would use for um, some sushi dishes would use a, a similar rice, but actually not I identical. Um, but arborio rice is, is a short grain rice and it absorbs, has that beauty. It's used quite often for um, Italian dishes like, uh, what am I thinking of? Yes. <laughs> well, there we go. Mine's, we, mine's well, gone blank. <laughs> you know, we're at that age where our minds go blank. Uh, a dish that we make time and time again, we can't remember. Risotto. A risotto. So it's often used in a risotto. Actually, if I look over here <laughs> at the package, it says arborio rice, risotto rice. It is a risotto rice, but it's also very similar, if not identical to what we call a pudding rice it's great for desserts it really absorbs the flavors so when we put this coconut milk into this and a little bit of nutmeg mm, it is so good thank you Bista trail yes risotto what do we like i've been in italy for five months in in sicily as you know and i can't remember the name for risotto but you know when you're you're here facing an audience occasionally your mind goes blank but the funny thing is michelle's mind's gone blank as well that we've both made more risottos than you can throw a stick at is there such a thing raggy says get the uke out and sing the ingredients sing the ingredients raggy what a good idea now first thing i want to do um we have uh we're using about a 10 percent ratio of rice to milk i am using coconut milk here it's actually the uh, a combination of milk and cream. I don't know if you notice when you open up a can of coconut cream or coconut milk, there's quite often the thick uh, buttery cream on top. I've got that sort of coconut milk and we've used that. We've got um, 700 mils, which is about uh, 25 milliliters. Michelle will check the milliliters for anybody that cares to know. Fluid, fluid, 25 fluid yeah. ounces. About five and a half. So 700 um, to 70 grams, so it's about 10%. You can work it out with almost any um, ingredient you want to do. So if you're using, uh, if you want to double this up, you're still using about 10% of your um, rice. A very small amount of rice, but it is gonna make a huge pudding. I want to pop this into a pot. Uh, just got a regular saucepan here, and I want to start the cooking process by heating this milk up so we're not going to actually get it to boil um but, well we actually are going to get it close to boil hope my gas hob lights first time otherwise i'll be using the uh the old striker biker so we just want to bring that up until it's just a rolling simmer and the reason we're doing that really is because we want to save power in the oven you don't want that in the oven it's a slow cook so you get a lovely hopefully a little crust form on top but by, by heating it up first, we can just, you know, we're not making the oven bring the, the liquids up to temperature. So no, no other reason than that, really. 
Any good questions in there, Michelle, that we need to uh, address while I'm... Um, well, Kevin Metzger says hello, Steve. Greetings from South America. Hey, Kevin. Hello. South America. That's a big place. Whereabouts in South America, um, buddy? Diana? Diana. It's not spelt highly, but... <laughs> Where is that? Oh, quite way up. Near Davos. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to see the, the comments. I think it's possibly off of my screen now. Possibly. So, so um... yes, I think it is. That's why you can't see it. Okay. And Tony Winchester says greetings from Brazil. Hey, Tony. Greetings right back at you. So, put the camera down here, Michelle, and I can just explain what we're doing down in the pot. Uh, we have a Simple, uh, you could use an earthenware pot. I've got just a, a simple Pyrex pot here. Uh, it needs to be big enough, obviously, to take the liquids that you want. I'm going to add my 70 grams. Now, all the ingredients, and actually, I'll just come back up a moment so I can just say to Steve. Steve, when we actually finish these recipes, I'm gonna send you, uh, if you give me your email address, I'm gonna post across the PDF for you so you can actually um, save these ingredients for Emily Rose and, and make them uh, if you haven't already. Uh, so I'll, I'll send those across. And I'll maybe make those PDFs available to everybody else as well. So I've just, back down here, I feel like Keith Floyd. <laughs> so I've, I've actually buttered the inside of this dish with just with some soft butter and that's, Adds a, um, actually I've used, um, it's not butter, what is it that, that we use? It's a, like a, a dairy-free spread. So we've actually sort of lined the inside of that. And the reason is, is just to help clean the pot really when it, uh, when it comes out. Now I, I'm going to actually add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sweetener in with this. I'm using caster sugar. What do you think, Michelle, maybe about a tablespoon? Yeah, I mean, if you like, I would say a tablespoon is about good. I'm te tending to think about custards. That would usually be enough to sweeten a custard for me. Some people like it sweeter. So we're just adding a little sugar in there to sweeten the dish. Now, I almost forgot. Come back up here. Come back up. Did we put vanilla in the test run? Not in this one, that's in the other one. Would vanilla be nice? No, because we've got nutmeg on top. Oh yes, now we're gonna leave the vanilla. <laughs> See? You have a tendency to put vanilla in things when you shouldn't, and there was me just doing it. So that is there. We're just bringing this up to heat. Make sure the temperature's up. I know these live shows can be a bit slow. We have done some pre-cooking. Man, we've done some prepping. Um, so Alma Amona is, my name is Iman from Baghdad, Iraq. Welcome to the show. So the other dish we're going to be making, as I said, is a creme caramel. Now creme caramel also works really well with coconut, but we'll be going into that a little bit later. Michelle, have you got any questions there while the, while the milk comes up to temperature? And while I have a slurp of my, my coffee? <laughs> well, my... Ray Max Kitchen and Grills just come in and said, what are you making today, my friend? Ray Max, you missed the intro. We're actually going to be making um, dairy-free dishes and uh, two dishes today on the show if everything works out okay. Uh, possibly even three, three dishes if I have time and I'm enjoying myself. So uh, that one I'm not gonna talk about just yet. You'll have to wait till later on in the show to see what we come up with. Raggy <laughs> says Michelle's getting good at switching the camera views. Take her out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Take her out for dinner. All right, see you later Raggy. We're off <laughs> out for dinner. <laughs> Leslie's in, hiya, how are you Leslie? See a little balloon pop up there, yeah. sweetheart. That looks good. And Ruby's in as well. And Isabella says greetings from Sweden. And Ryan, just Ryan. Hey, <laughs> Ryan. Says hi, guys. Live cooking, brilliant. Um, is this more uh, caloric? Now, we just check the, the balance of calories against uh, regular milk, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Ruby, you can check that for me as well. Now, my milk is just starting to simmer around the outsides. And I'm really only bringing it up to temperature. We're not scolding the milk like we would do with some dishes. We just want to get it up to temperature to sort of ease the pressure on the oven. So when it goes in, it's starting to bake straight away. This dish actually takes about two and a half hours to bake. So I've got one that we actually got up this morning and put into the oven so you'll be able to see what it looks like. And it's coming along beautifully, actually. 
getting some color on there. We also are um, gonna take this dish out of the oven in about 30 minutes after 30 minutes of putting it in and we're just gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg is the traditional flavor with this style of, um, of rice pudding. Now, my milk is coming up to temperature. Camera down. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, down. So we've got that warm milk, it's just hissing away there. And I'm just going to add it over the, uh, the pudding rice or the arboreo, or arboreo rice. And you can see it's a lot of liquid, but it is the right amount of liquid, I can assure you. I'm just going to give it a little stir through. So we're just sort of distributing the sugars and the rice along the bottom of the dish. And that pretty much is it. That is how simple this dish is. It is now going to go into the oven and we're going to bake it for about 30 minutes. Then I'm going to just take it out. Um, a little bit of a skin will have formed on top. We still on the down camera? No, I'm up now. Oh no, I'm showing, I'm showing down the, the bottom. Mm. Down. See Raggy? She's not so good, man. She's got the, I'm doing all my hand motions down here. So a little bit of a skin will form on top and I'm going to grate some fresh nutmeg. These are nutmegs, by the way. And that one's not open, Michelle, so I'm going to have to crack that one open. Um, these are little nutmegs. I'm going to grate some fresh nutmeg on there. So camera can come back up. This is going to go in the oven. Now ask some questions while I'm doing this because I probably can't keep an eye on the comments or the chat. So if Michelle's got anything she needs to ask, pop that in there. No, no one's asking questions. Ask some questions. Just saying hello and how good you are. <laughs> hey Google, give me 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes and it's starting now. So there's my 30 minutes. Mrs. Google's gonna let me know when I can take that out of the oven and grate the nutmeg on it. Now, Amona, I can't read that to you. You'll have to, oh, you're talking amongst each other, <laughs> you cheeky are. monkeys. I'm doing it so we can't see it. Oh, I could say your name, but it's, it's not a nice name, Libtard. <laughs> so, much as I, I love having you in here and things, I'm not going to say it. So Raggy's asking, would raw sugar work or would that erode the color presentation? No, actually raw sugar would work, uh, Raggy, and even a coconut sugar would be quite nice. It will add a more caramelized color to the dish. Um, traditionally, the, the, um, uh, the uh, rice pudding is quite a pale white color, so it will change the traditional look of, of the dish, and that's why I tend to use the white sugar. Um, so yes and no, uh, I, I certainly you, you add an element of caramel. Now, we can actually talk about this. This is a nutmeg. I got these nutmegs in Malaysia. I've also got some that I got in Sri Lanka when we were there. And uh, a nutmeg, fresh nutmeg is absolutely beautiful. I'm getting out my rolling pin and the reason I'm getting that out is because you can hear a little rattle inside this nutmeg. And if I can, I just crack, just come down here, Michelle. I just give it a nice little tap and you can see it's split open and that is the nutmeg that we're looking for. We don't want the shell um, and actually the mace which is another spice is, is the sort of fibrous outing of the, of the nutmeg. Um, but this now is soft enough that we can actually um, grate it on a fine grater and we end up with this one. The reason I'm opening another one is because this one is getting very near the end. You can see there, uh, I've grated it on the side. Fresh nutmeg, by the way. Last, we come back up on camera if we can. Um, fresh nutmeg lasts for ever and a day. So if you buy powdered nutmeg in the supermarkets, it oxidizes and loses a lot of its potency after a very short time. So try to, if you can, um, always buy fresh, whole seeds rather than powdered seeds. You just get a much better result and they last much longer. As Kevin Metzger agrees with you, fresh nutmegs are way better. They are way, way better. I, I've always used fresh nutmeg. I don't think I can remember ever buying, unless maybe on the road I've needed some grated nutmeg, but uh, it just doesn't have the same the same thing. It's so easy to use. This is, uh, just come down again, Michelle. This is a cool, this is actually specifically for nutmeg. It's a little grater, it's got a little lid on the top there, you can probably see, and you pop your nutmeg in the top, pop the lid on, hang it up in your, your larder. It's got a little hook there. 
Um, it's great. I've had it for gosh, longer than I can remember. And back up to me. <laughs> now, we're going to have to get on and make our second dish. I think we can do it now, can we, Michelle? I think we can. Permission from the boss? Permission granted. Permission granted. Again, this is a, a, a basically, um, again, for Emily Rose or anyone out there that uh, has to avoid um, dairy products, this is a classic uh, product, a delicious thing. And I don't think anyone should have to miss out on this just because they can't have dairy. It works really well with coconut milk. And um, I've tried and tested and played with this method, so I know it works really well. And we're going to start by just breaking a couple of eggs into a bowl. Come down, might as well, I suppose. Mm -hmm. My beautiful egg cracking skills. Might just do this one on the counter. And that probably. So we have a couple of eggs into a bowl. And again, if we just come up to me and shout, wouldn't mind. See what I've done? I've used my milk pot. Uh, which I was going to use my caramel in. So I can still do it. Still do it. I can still do it. Uh, I want to make a caramel. I like a, a bigger round of base uh, to my pan because my gas rings are a little bit, where I'm staying at the moment, a little bit tetchy. Uh, some of them work better than others and I prefer the size of the ring. I'm going to work it anyway. We need a caramel. Creme caramel has a, a, a caramel sugar in the bottom and there's a really beautiful sort of effect. You know, when you turn out a creme caramel, you get that beautiful drizzle of caramel that comes down the side. And that basically is just a simple caramel. We've got, um, what is this in, in ounces, Michelle? 140 grams? 140 grams. So we just come back down on the camera. Yeah. 140 grams sugar. I'm using caster sugar. You could, don't use brown sugar. You can't judge the point of caramelization with brown sugar. Um, use a regular white sugar. I'm going to add a little splash camera back up. I'm going to add a little splash of water in there. It doesn't actually need the water. Um, it actually slows the process down, but it means I can, I don't have to keep an eye on it quite so intensely uh, if I've got there. The important thing is when we put this onto the heat now, uh, because I've got a smaller pan than I wanted, I'm gonna have to find a gas or electric ring that is quite small. Because if you get the gas where it sort of wraps up the side, you tend to scold the edge of the sugar. And that's why I was gonna use that bigger pan, which I've actually used for heating the cream. Um, and I have got a, um, a ring back here that works reasonably well, it's smaller. Just means it's gonna be a slightly slower process. I will show you as we go along. I'm gonna pop it on there and forget about it. I'm not going to forget about it, but I'm not going to I'm not going to stir it or mess around with it because I, I want the sugars to break down naturally and start to get to the point of caramelization. If you get spoons in there and stir, you can cause crystallization. Um, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. In a moment, watch sugar over my hands. So a quick um, a quick rinse. Okay, right. You're still asking about nutmeg. Nutmeg in a shell. You lucky dog. Nutmeg is a magic ingredient. Do the two you mentioned have a different taste? than the domestic I get here in the States. The two I mentioned? Was that mace maybe? In mace and nutmeg? nutmeg? Um, definitely fresh nutmeg has a different taste to um, powdered nutmeg. Mr. Troll agrees that once you use fresh nutmeg, you'll never go back to yeah, ground. You, you won't. It, it has, Raggy, as you, as you grate that on there, there's, the smells coming off this are like citrus. They're, citrusy, peppery sort of smells, which break down very quickly when they reach oxygen, when they're in the air. Uh, so what you tend to get when you get powdered um, nutmeg is something that has an essence of nutmeg, but has lost a lot of the um, bioxidization, some of the, the, the more subtle characteristics of nutmeg. Is that getting too boring, Raggy? Um, so fresh is best, all right? Um, they both have their place. I mean, when you actually buy mixed spices or pumpkin spices, often they're put powdered um, nutmeg in there. It, that can offer a slightly peppery sound. Just keeping an eye on my sugar, make sure that flame isn't too high. If the flame is too high, as I said to you before, tendency for the side of the pot. Also, always make sure that your pots have a, a reasonably solid base. If they're a very thin base, you know, they distribute heat really badly and they make very poor caramel. 
Um, in this bowl here, we're going to be, it's all right, we can stay out. <laughs> Michelle was rushing to get the down camera. In this bowl, bowl here, we're going to be making effectively a, a custard, um, but we're doing it with, uh, with coconut milk. Um, I do, where is my coconut milk? Ah, oh, here. I'm actually going with a coconut cream. This is just a, a random company, TCC, I've used it before. Uh, I suspect, let's open this up and have a little look. Come down here, Michelle, and we'll just have a look. Um, I suspect when we open this up, oh no, this one's fairly well emulsified, so it's a, it's a thick cream. You'll see with coconut cream, it has um, almost a sort of green color to it. Um, and that, oh, that's delicious. Come back up here. And that's because coconut cream is made from the actual fiber of the coconut as well as the milk, so they tend to have, or they should be made uh, as well as the milk, so they do have some sort of organic matter in them as well, which makes that creamy flavor. And it's also what makes this work really well in, in a lot of these desserts that, I, that I'm doing today. Now I'm going to take uh, a can. Um, Michelle, maybe you could type up on there what size this can it's is. Like 400 ml is your can, by the way. Uh, the caramel's fine. Yeah, the water will still be, okay. still be. So I'm going to take the full can. I don't know if our cans all around the world are the same. What size is this one? 400 milliliters. And I want to heat this up again. I'm heating it up, but not for the same reasons this time. I'm using this to actually start to set our custard. So I'm going to pop that on the heat. And I'll explain to you in a moment why, why we're setting the custard. Now, my caramel at the moment, my sugars are bubbling. I'm sorry we haven't got a camera over there. My sh sugars are bubbling, but they're still crystal clear. They look like um, Yoohoo glue, <laughs> for the sake of a, another word. I am going to add a little bit of vanilla bean paste. Now, if I was doing this for the queen, I'd probably get pure vanilla uh, for the queen. Oh, look, queen, vanilla bean. <laughs> Queen Organic Vanilla Bean Paste. This stuff is really good. It gives those lovely vanilla pods. I'm going to drizzle. You won't be able to probably see this on camera. A little bit. Probably about half a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. Now, van vanilla really is essential part of this recipe. Um, and I'm just going to bring that up to heat. So we're going to add some vanilla this time into our coconut as well. I'm hoping that it'll impart some of the natural flavors of the creme caramel. Just take a little look at my sugars. They're still nice and light. When those sugars start to get a little blonde sort of color to them, um, they're gonna fairly rapidly start to caramelize. So what I want you to do, have ready, and I'm using three ramekins. Um, these are not, if you just come down here, Michelle, these are a little bit big, these ramekins. I'll just show you the ones that I used for the prepping. The ones I prepared for you earlier, all Blue Peter fashion, they are simple white ramekins. I haven't got another set of them, so these ones are a little bit bigger. <coughs> and what we're going to do is take our caramel, this beautiful, uh, maybe come back up to camera, Michelle. Um, we're gonna take our caramel, we're just gonna pour it in the bottom of these ramekins and it will set like a hard toffee. Uh, and, and when you put your creme caramel into there, um, initially the sugars and the, and, and the custard will start to join together. But if you, if you tip these out too early, you'll still have um, quite a piece of, um, of, of toffee in the bottom of these. Uh, they need to be left overnight really, or a good few hours to allow the caramels and the custard to sort of blend together and then you get a beautiful runny sauce. The longer you leave, the better the sauce is. That's good, Michelle. Michelle keeps pointing over at the caramel. It is just starting. Is the camera on the down at the moment? It's on the up. Can we get to the down and uh -huh. I'll just bring it in maybe okay. to show. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. I'll just give it a little, probably not. Tip it, a bit more. Uh, tip it I think yeah, it'll go the other way. Yeah. So you can see it's just getting a little straw color. We'll, we'll stay down on camera, but you read out some comments. If... Okay, um, well, Jan said, I hope coconut milk tastes better than rice milk. I tried that once, yuck. Oh, who was that, Jan? Jan, yes. It, it tastes delicious, Jan. Rice milk is, it just doesn't compare. Mm. Coconut milk is gorgeous. 
Um, coconut cream is quite high calorie. Uh, Ruby was saying about that earlier. It can be quite high calorific, but I think it's quite has a lot of other benefits. Um, and I don't know if Michelle will research that, but we can look into that later. Now, my caramel, if we just come up again, we are going to go down camera in a moment, Michelle. So mm -hmm. I just want to say my caramel is going now to the, the, the sort of color of <laughs> almost like a hazelnut skin. So it's um, a hazelnut shell. So it's got some color on it now. And you'll start to get a, you'll start to get a, a smell coming off of there, a little like burnt sugars. I want it to go towards dark, so you don't want it to burn. It will very, very quickly burn, by the way. So just keep an eye on it at this stage. Uh, you'll see the outer rim of the caramel start to go a little darker than the center ring. I am just keeping an eye on it. And if we go to down camera now, I'm quite happy with the, the, the colors that are coming in here. Um, let me just turn the gas off. Now, can you see yep. the darkness in there? It actually probably needs to go just a little bit longer. I'm just going to do that a tiny bit longer. I, I do want to get towards that sort of nutty brown uh, that I think creates a lovely creme caramel. And we are talking literally seconds, I think, to get there. So you do need to use... Are we camera down at the moment, Sharon? Yeah, just camera up. Okay. We're going to go down. We're going to go down. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy with that now. Yeah. Come down on the camera. Can we see into the ramekins? Yeah. So I'm just going to pour that. You do need oven-proof dishes for this. I'm going to pour that hot caramel sauce into the bottom of each of these ramekins. Um, these are funny little ramekins because they've got almost a dimpled base to them, like almost like a wine bottle. Um, and I'm just going to put. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. It's all good. It's all good. So Kevin um, says coconut cream is sweeter too. It it, it does. Although. Um, so can you see? Are we down at the moment? Yeah, we're down. Can you yeah. see that it's got that steaming hot? Do not. Let's come up to me in a minute. Let me give a warning here. Public announcement warning. Do not, under any circumstances, get that sugar on your skin or anywhere near. It's not something to, to do with the children. Emily Rose, you cannot do this recipe with your dad, although you might be able to do or with your granddad. Um, you, you need to be careful. Hot sugars are very hot. Now, I do need to add some sugar in with, this, um, with these eggs. So just come down on camera. Let's just get the whisk. We'll start to break down the, the egg whites. I'm just going to uh, get my beautiful whisk in there. Why is my whisk beautiful? Well, mainly because it does so many great things for me. A whisk with lots of tines really helps you a great deal. Um, and I've got a lot to be thankful to that whisk. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of sugar to sweeten my custard. And then... I'm going to continue to whisk. Fairly vigorously, because I want to break the egg whites uh, down, the sort of structure of the egg whites. And do you need to do this with a machine? Really, it isn't so hard. Um, so let's just break those up until we get a nice, thin egg mixture. and. The beauty of this recipe is it only needs two eggs for four uh, puddings. A lot of them use a lot more egg and I don't think it's necessary. So the questions have slowed down. Is everybody paying great well, attention? Gashona Smith asked earlier on, um, somehow I have allowed a few cheeses to get really hard. What can I do to rescue them so they do not get, need to be thrown away? Right, I can't answer that in a moment. I'm going to show you this and I am going to answer that in a moment. But just come down here, make sure you're down. This yeah. milk now, this coconut milk, is super hot and if we just pour it straight in there it can cook the eggs and we can get lumps so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to temp the eggs a little bit with some hot milk just drizzle a little bit in there give it a, a little bit of a beat and that just helps the eggs from from cooking too quickly and ending up lumpy and then we're just going to just like a regular custard i'm going to pour that coconut cream in there nice and slowly whilst whisking and the smell that's coming off of there now is so, so good. Um, 
Now, I don't need to be quite so vigorous now. I'm just going to give this a little stir through. Now, if you come back up to me a moment, mm -hmm. if you were making this for the Queen or someone super special, actually, that's not fair because I am making this for super special people, you want to t let the foam settle or skim the foam off a perfect creme caramel. They tend to always take this foam. You just come down here and I'll, I'll, I'll show. Um, they tend to take this foam off. So you can sort of pull it to the side and you'll see underneath. So they skim the foam off, all right? And this foam, by the way, is delicious. I'm not gonna worry too much about it for this. If you really want to go full traditionalist, skim that foam off. Let's bring our ramekins over here now near to the bowl. I have a ladle um, and I'm just going to take some of my foamy custard because I'm not bothered by the foam or the bubbles on, on my creme caramel. It will still look gorgeous when it comes out and I'm just going to pour it on top of my caramelized sugars. I'm going to bring it up fairly close to the top, evenly distribute these out if I can. Um, with my smaller ramekins, I can make four. With, this, with these larger ramekins, I can only just about make three. They're, they're deceptively quite big compared to, um, to the little white ramekins. So gently pouring those in. Let's just bring them all up to a similar level. Any questions? Anyone wants to know anything about the difference between this and a creme brulee or... Actually, they're pretty much the same thing, so I can answer that one for you straight off, except for we put the sugars on top of a creme brulee and caramelize them afterwards. Now, look at those beautiful custards. They're very thin at the moment, and we want them to be set so we can tip them out and have a beautiful, delicious. I wonder if um, we're gonna be interrupted by, by Google at any moment now. I suspect we're getting closer. I have myself a, we, we, we're doing this in a bain-marie, uh, a bath of hot water. Um, so I'm just gonna pop these three ramekins, are we, are we down at the moment? Down, yeah. Okay, into my earthenware tray. You need something with a bit of space around it. We want some hot kettle water. Now, normally, oh, stay down, normally I would, Put this into the oven. Uh, we're talking about 180 degrees Celsius. That's about 350 Fahrenheit. I pop this. We can come up now. <laughs> I would normally slide this tray into the oven and I'd put my hot water in there. It's a safer way of doing it. It just means there's less chance of you uh, getting splashed. But I'm just going to show you on camera um, and I'll, I'll, I'll wing it. We'll get it in there. So I've got hot kettle water here. Hopefully I remember to boil it. You can see the steam. And we're just gonna to top up this tray probably about an inch or so. If the ramekins were smaller, we'd be two thirds of the way up. With these ramekins, we're probably about half the way up, but I'm happy with that. And then what we're going to, what we will do then is, is lift this very gently. Don't forget we've got hot water in there and we're gonna come up to camera. And we're going to slide that into oven. We're gonna bake those for about 30 minutes. Uh, I'm looking for a little tiny bit of color. You'll see them puff up a little bit um, uh, like a souffle. Um, they're starting to sort of dome on the top. And when they are cooked, you can actually take a, a, a little toothpick and just push it in. You'll see it comes out nice and clean they're, and they're ready. We take them out then and we let them cool down on the side and then we will chill them in the fridge overnight. And that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm not gonna put these in the oven just yet because as you know, are we camera up or down? As you know, we've got a pudding in there at the moment, cooking away at a slightly different temperature. And looking, looking rather nice. Now, let me just check if we're, how close we are to 30 minutes. We've still got seven minutes to go. There was a question there was about cheese. About I have, cheese. I have allowed a few cheeses to get really hard. What can I do to rescue them so that they don't need to be thrown away? And someone has suggested, Kevin suggested, make a cheese sauce. And then the Shona has asked, do I need to pound it first or soak it? 
No, you don't need to do either. Um, you, you can actually make a cheese sauce with very hard cheeses by just adding them to uh, a milk uh, in a hot pan, and you can just bring that up to a heat and just break the, you know, just cut it up. It's easier if it's, it's cut slightly smaller and drop that into your your white sauce. If you actually start with a, um, not a Burmani, a, a, a roux, which is just a flour and milk, a little bit of seasoning in there. Um, I've got a few recipes showing how to make a roux, then you can add that cheese in. But in all honesty, a cheese doesn't spoil when it becomes hard. I think about a Parmesan. Parmigiano is just basically, forgive me, Italy, it's basically a cheddar cheese that's gone really hard. Um, and it is, they are a hard, like Conte in, in, in France, which is a, a similar cheese again. Um, those cheeses, as they age through the years, they become more valuable. You know, a fresh, young uh, Conte or cheddar um, is considered to be uh, still delicious, but often is cheaper. An aged one becomes like a mature cheddar. And a Parmesan is really a very mature uh, uh Cheddar for the wonderful way. They're, they're a very similar, there's a very similar process to producing those two cheeses. Um, and I often find if you've if you've got a cheese, what cheese was it? Did they mention the cheese? No, just a few. <laughs> okay. Particularly um, those harder cheeses like the cheddars and things, don't worry about it. Uh, let it harden up and, and grate it, uh, use it like a parmesan, parmigiano. It's a, it will be a different taste because the process and the um, the uh, the bacteria they use for making the cheese are slightly different. They have slightly different flavors, but very similar characteristics. Don't throw it away and don't worry about it. Um, the way you can stop that is by, uh, you know, keeping it in a, uh, a cheese container of some sort that stops the evaporation of the moisture. Um, wrapping it tight in, in plastic wraps and things can often mean they'll go off. Um, Air is quite important around cheese as well, but if you stop the, the air from escaping. So no, don't you, it's not ruined and it's probably many, many months away from being ruined. And actually in many ways it, it's better, you know, as it gets hard. Even, um, even Stilton's and softer cheeses, as they get hard, you can, you can use them as a, a sort of like a garnish on, on uh, pastas and things. So miscoat wine red feather says so I have to skim it for my wife and you're making the creme caramel because it's somebody special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to show you, look, here is, here is one, here Emily Rose, this is one I made for you earlier, it's even got number one on it and I think the reason I put number one on this one because yes, the caramel escaped a little bit from... Um, it just, I put it in a little bit too soon, the caramel just popped up. If I, if I go to number two, let me just get number two. If I go to number two, you'll see that I've got the color, colorization on there, um, but not so much of the caramelization. And you'll see that the, uh, the creme, this, this is going to look beautiful in a minute. Let me, let me do one to, to show you just how pretty they are. I'll just get a plate out. Now, there are two ways. Are we camera up at the moment? Camera. There are two ways of releasing. If you're, if you're confident, you can actually just push the edge of the creme caramel and just break the sides and it will drop out. I am going to cut it with a knife. Um, I don't think we've got a knife here. Michelle, if you could just grab me a sharp one. Um, just to, to break the seal around the edge of the creme caramel and then we'll, we'll serve this one right now because I'm actually, I have had no breakfast. A seven years cheddar beast of trio is, it's gotta be absolutely delicious. Now within, within reason, some cheeses will spoil, but generally cheeses are a, are a preserve. So are we down at the moment? Can we come down? Yeah, we can do it. So I'm just really breaking with the knife, the edge of the creme caramel, just to release it from the inside of the ramekin. I've never used these ramekins to make this creme caramel before. So you are seeing this as I'm seeing it. Hopefully it is going to work perfectly. I can tip it out like a sandcastle or I can pop the plate on. Are we down at the moment? Yep. Like that, give it, um, a little tap, whoops, oh, maybe I've not cut down deep enough, let me just go down all the way down, release the whole creme caramel from the inside, um, pop that in, give it a, a little 
Now, uh, is that a good camera? Is the angles good? Yes. Should I bring it up closer? Yeah. yeah. Can you see the the caramel sauce coming out there? And how beautiful is that? There's still a little bit of extra caramel inside. Now you can see. I'll just get a teaspoon because I want to get this extra caramel sauce that's in here. And just pour it over the creme caramel. Now you can see there are bubbles in this one because I was lazy and I decided to pour it much the same. But how pretty. Come up here, Michelle. Mm -hmm. How pretty is that? <sighs> I'm salivating. Down, up a, no, down, down a bit. bit. Up a bit, up a bit. Up, up a bit, bit, up a bit. Up there, there, perfect. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting directions. See, I can't see the cameras. I can't see. Hang a bit high. Uh, I'm it. just going to cut into this now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then we can, are we on? It's on you. Oh, I love creme caramels. Jan said, was listening to someone speak about their trip to Vietnam and they mentioned a coffee and I thought of you. Excuse me, Jan. We had these in Vietnam too. Mm, they make these in Vietnam, but they make them uh, non-dairy free. This is so good. The caramel, that smoky caramel. Oh man. First meal of the day. It cuts like a, like a regular milk uh, caramel. It's got that lovely smoky flavor. If you were doing this for a restaurant or something, then you'd knock the bubbles out of it uh, and get it to look super perfect. But you cannot, um, you cannot say that that doesn't look. Let's go camera down for a moment. I'm going to give this to Michelle to uh, to finish, um, or am I? Or am I? You cannot say that doesn't look just as good. It's a little bit. Um, oh, hello Google. You have to give it to me because you're busy now. I'm busy now, Michelle. You can have that. Thank you. That is, that is so good. I'm so pleased with the way that's come out. It's set perfectly. Um, now, the little beeper there is just for me to get um, our other dessert out of the oven, and we're just gonna put a little bit of our fresh nutmeg on there. So we go camera down, and if I get in there carefully, I need, uh, yeah, just, um, Something like, is that camera down at the moment? Yeah. Just pop one there, Michelle. Thank you very much. Now, you'll see that there's a little uh, a little skin starting to form on the top. Now, I'm going to give it a, another little stir, and you'll see our rice um, is just you know just to make sure the rice is evenly distributed. And we are going to take fresh nutmeg. Where's my new one? I'll take the new nutmeg. Why not? And I want to grate this nutmeg over the top and completely cover a little fine dusting of fresh nutmeg over the top of my rice pudding. Now it won't set. This won't set quite like a um, like a dairy version because. It's different fats, but it will still give it a nice little coating of nutmeg over the top. And that is going to go back in the oven. 140 degrees Celsius, did we say that already? Yeah. Uh, what is that Fahrenheit? Uh, 285. So that is going back in the oven. Camera back up if you like. Okay. And um, we're going to bake that for another couple of hours. I've got one ready for you, by the way, uh, which is all good. And that's going to allow the rice to absorb the coconut milks and to, to, this is the first time I've made this by the way, so I'm hoping this method works. We're using a very traditional um, baking method for rice pudding and we're just really substituting it with coconut milk and I'm hoping it's going to work fine. Now, some questions, fire away. And they say, they, Tropic, Tropic Lush says, they say nine out of 10 Olympians drink milk. Are you guys watching the Olympics? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tropic Lush, I, 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 I'm not watching the Olympics. I, I might watch some little highlights. I just don't, um, I don't watch TV at all. And sometimes I don't even realize the Olympics are on until they've finished. So, uh, and I do, I used to love the Olympics. 
uh, when I was younger. I do I love the Olympics? I enjoyed the Olympics, but I don't like all the commercial nonsense that goes around it. I find it frustrating, and I, I, I the sort of semi uh, thing. I do love to see the ice skating, um, the the figure skating occasionally, but no, I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it because I I I, I won't watch the the. Uh, the main Olympics, uh, the Summer Olympics, when it comes on, I don't tend to watch any TV. Yeah, you finished that. Michelle's just completely devoured that lovely creme caramel. How long have we got for the rice pudding before it comes out? Um, fifteen minutes. About fifteen minutes. Would you like? Would anyone out there out there like me to make a really simple? But I know Emily Rose would probably like me to, to make a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie. And this is completely unrehearsed. I don't think that they're going to be that complicated to make. Might as well go for it, shall we? Yeah. Shall? If you think you can do it. Oh, I know we can do it. Chocolate chip cookie then, dairy free. So three recipes, three recipes for the price of two. Is there a price of two? I don't think so. I am going to make a, a chocolate chip. We're going to be going to, and um, what I probably do, because I want to enhance that coconut flavour, I'm going to be using, Michelle's grabbing all my bits. We did think about this in advance, and we thought if we had time, we would do it. I'm going to be using um, coconut oil. This is actually the, 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 the ready um, uh, liquid oil, but you can actually use, let me just show you just one second. You can actually use... Uh, solid coconut oil as well this is an organic coconut oil which is set in a block it's same difference you can use both of them I'm going to get Michelle to go back on camera so she can sort of organize the the blank spots so to speak get my scales out because I always weigh everything Dad. you know me no no we, we can stay up I think I'm going to start with Flour again. Are we going to go self-raising flour or all-purpose? I'm going to go self-raising. If you want to use all-purpose flour, all you'll need to do is add some baking powder and a little bit of baking soda. I would say probably uh, about a teaspoon of baking powder. And if you want also, if you're going to bake them straight away uh, and you're not going to freeze them, you could also add half a teaspoon of uh, baking soda in there as well just to add, because I want these cookies to rise a little bit. So what are we going, Michelle, just re remind me of my ingredients that I did. It was uh, how many grams of? Uh, 250. So 250 grams of self-raising flour. Or all all-purpose flour, the combination of uh, baking. Is this a good idea to do a third recipe? Did anyone say yes? <laughs> I'm rolling forward. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies. Might as well have this recipe as well. So we're going 250 grams. And I will tell you what that out is in ounces. That's um, nine ounces yeah. of, of all-purpose flour. Um, we want a little bit of salt in here as well. I'm just going to grab some salt. I can go with uh, regular rock salt. So I'm just going to put about uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. It just lifts. It just lifts the flavour of the cookies if you add some salt in with it. Um, are my cup measurements around? They are over here. How much oil am I going to pop in here, Michelle? Well, maybe a bit of sugar in because they might be the same. Uh, let me um, just... Uh, half a cup plus one tablespoon. Now the sugar is... Uh, half a cup. Half a cup of sugar. Sugar. So we're going to go... We what? are blagging this. You're going to use the coconut sugar? No, I'm going to use soft brown sugar. Okay, half a cup. I'm going to use soft brown sugar. We actually have... Um, some organic coconut blossom sugar here as well but I'm not sure how well it will work and and I think I tend to use that sort of sugar as a sort of garnish or a topping uh, for baking I think I'm going to stick with regular sugar so I've got a um... yeah Shona says yes <laughs> doesn't matter I'm doing it anyway mainly because I want some cookies later on and uh, so we're going to take half a cup of compacted brown sugar and just pop it in there as well um, and I'm going to add some, we, get, we need some fats in there, some oils, dropping things on the floor. So 
I'm going to add some coconut oil. Are we looking for half a cup? Half a well? cup plus a, tape, plus a bit. Now this coconut oil is a little bit expensive, so I wouldn't possibly use it. The harder oils are, are, are a bit cheaper. Um, so we're going to put our oil in there by way of a fat. This, by the way, if you've got pets, uh, coconut oil is really good for them in very small amounts. It's a great antibacterial for their teeth and for their mouths. Um, uh, just a, um, really only a teaspoon, not, not a lot. Don't go sort of glugging it in because that isn't great. But it is good for your pets if you want to add a little bit in with their foods. Um, we're going to go chocolate chip. So I will be needing some chocolate chips. I'm going to go with these Cadbury's chocolate chips. And I do want to put a fair amount in. I'm going to start making my dough up first though. Uh, what am I missing in here? Um, are we going with egg? No. So we're not binding this one with an egg. I only wrote this recipe out early this morning and I can't even remember what I, what I use. Um, will I use some vanilla? Um, I'm not going to bother with vanilla on this one because I'm not using eggs. And I tend to only use vanilla extract when I'm masking um, the egg flavor. So that's you technically... Call a cup of water. Yeah, that's just to help. I'm just going to bring this. So you end up with a crumb. It, are we down at the moment? No. Yeah. You see at the moment, this dough is a little bit like wet sand. And I'm going to add in a little bit of water, about half a uh, quarter of a cup. <clears throat> Jan says it's getting late. Good night, all. Good night, Jan. So I've got a little bit of water by a quarter of a cup of water. I'm not going to put it all in together. I just want to see it bind. Are we down at the moment? No, we're down. I just want it to bind this um, this cookie dough together. So it's a little bit. Don't forget there is baking powder in this by way of it's a self raising. Yeah, see that starting to bind together now. A little bit of extra water. So I'm going with a quarter of a cup. Um, maybe I was a little bit low on that a little splash more. You'll see what I mean as I start to bring this together the dough will become a little more clumpy. I can then get my hands in there and you can see if I squeeze that now it starts to stay together like a, a regular cookie dough. I am now going to add in chocolate chip cookies or even chocolate chips not cookies. Now, disclaimer, just bring that up to me, Michelle. Michelle's gone for a walkabout. She's actually gone a wandering. These are not dairy free, and I'm telling you that now because I didn't have time to go out and get dairy free chocolate chips. You can get them. So we don't have to, to worry about dairy free. So, Emily Rose, I'm very sorry. I'm using Cadbury's. Uh, these are not dairy free. You you need to actually check um, if you if you're making these for somebody who's who's uh, uh, dairy uh, intolerant or lactose intolerant um, that you buy a chocolate chip that is dairy free. That is really really important. I can't express how much. The reason I'm using Cadbury's is because because it's what I had in. And I'm um, how many? What did I write down as cups for? Um, one and a quarter cups. So. I'm, I'm using a lot. I, I, I just want a lot of decent chocolate in this, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for the full one and a quarter because I'm gonna add a little twist to this. So now I'm if we're down on camera now, I don't think I need any extra water. Um, I might need a splash. I want some stickiness to this dough. Uh, because I'm gonna coat it in coconut. And that's not something I thought of until later on today. So we are winging it and blagging it a little bit. Okay, that needs a tiny splash more water. So a little splash more. Uh, if you see a little dustiness, a little dryness in the bottom of the dough, just add a tablespoon at a time, maybe even half a tablespoon to bring this dough together. Now, I'm kind of happy with that. What I want to do now is take these cookie, this cookie dough, and actually, if we do, are we up camera at the moment? No. no. When I make a cookie dough or any flour-based product, I tend to allow the flour to bloom. This should be left for half an hour for the moisture to get into the flour and let it sort of bloom out. So I'm, I'm breaking the rules a little bit here, um, and going straight with prepping them into into cookie doughs. 
Michelle, I'll let you read some, some questions out or some comments. Well, Kevin Metz Metzger says, I have a coconut tree in my yard. Beautiful. And he's in the north of Brazil. Oh, okay. Someone was asking. We used to have coconut trees in our, in our front yard when we lived up in Queensland. And um, we had also uh, coconut trees in our front yard when we lived in Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, very special Sri Lankan coconuts, the uh, king coconuts, which make delicious water. Uh, not so much meat, but delicious coconut milk. Kashona said, which one would grow here in Connecticut, USA? Connecticut, none. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, not, you're not far enough south uh, for coconuts, yeah. trees. Yeah. Yeah, you might grow them, but you wouldn't get the fruit. I'm pretty sure you, you'll see coconut trees, but they probably won't won't be producing the fruit that far um, north. This could be a little bit wet, a little bit dry this day. I'm, I'm a bit wary. Um, the Nuba says, "Do you live in the UK?" No, I live in uh, in Australia. Um, I'm originally from the UK for many years back, but I've probably lived in Australia longer than I have in the UK in my life. Uh, but I've lived in many parts of the world also. So I'm just balling these up, and if Michelle put the camera down a moment, you'll see I'm just chucking them down almost anywhere. Uh, I'm getting them about the size of a, a ping pong ball. You can come back up to me now. Um, okay, Shona says, is wax paper a good sub substitute for parchment paper? Should I start keeping parchment paper in the house? Wax paper doesn't bake very well. You'll find wax paper is, is not really suitable for, for baking. Um, it's good for for some things, but it's not great baking paper. It will actually burn. Um, and what is the difference between parchment? I'm not sure. Technically, I'm, I'm a draw a blank a little bit on parchment paper because baking paper is specifically uh, are formulated to, to work with, with cooking and the high temperatures. Uh, wax paper is not, and also it can, wax paper is often for arts and crafts and things like that. It can actually um, re release a lot more wax into the, the food, so you have to be careful with hot foods um, because uh, you can actually get candle wax type wax into your food, which is fine. It's not, not poisonous, it's not going to kill you, but uh, it can leave an unpleasant um, result when you're baking. So I have made here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cookies. And I'll get Michelle just to prepare a baking tray for me with a bit of baking paper, not uh, wax paper. I often use the two terms interchangeably, and I shouldn't do, because they are a waxy sort of paper. I'm thinking about the coconut, Michelle, I'm not 100% sure. This was an idea that we had um, late last night. And the thing when you're, you're doing a dairy cookie, you've got um, all those butter fats in there that help things stick to it um, with a coconut based cookie. Now I could have done this with a, a different oil as well. You could do it with a, 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 almost any sort of oil you like. Let me just try the coconut. Can you put some in a little bowl for me? On the shell book. So Maggie says parchment paper is designed for cooking in temperatures up to 450 degrees F and the wax from the wax paper coats your tongue and teeth. Not pleasant. No, it does work. So parchment paper is, is baking paper then, Maggie. So, um, and that's where I think often we get confused. If you buy, because you can quite often buy wax paper in the supermarkets in the same areas as baking paper. Um, but they don't work the same, as Raggy's just said there, you, you, you can actually, and, and, and they'll burn. Now, camera down, let's have a little try of this. So I've got chocolate chip cookies, is camera down? Yeah. I've got chocolate chip cookie dough uh, made with coconut oil, and what I'm gonna do is I just want to coat these over in some desiccated coconut. Okay, I think this might work. So let's try. You're, you're going to learn as I learn. And let's just see, because I think it'll add a lovely flavour and just sort of bring out um, the taste of the coconut. And I know Emily Rose loves the taste of coconut. These are rather big, these cookies, Michelle. Is that, it's your fault, liking big cookies? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always, when I'm just making my cookies at home, I tend to make them too big. Well, 
Is there such a thing as too big? I think not. Bistrotrol says parchment uses silicon. Okay, so camera back up. So I'm just I'm just rolling these little cookie balls just to get uh, to, just to knock the fats up to the surface. You know, if you sort of roll them in your hands, particularly hot hands like mine, um, you get that fat just coming to the surface, and that'll allow you to get the the coconut uh, to stick. And I'm not sure of the formation I'm going with on this um, parchment paper. Um, Kevin says wax paper could ignite in the oven. Yes, it can. It can. It, it's like a candle, virtually. You, you can. Uh, it burns quite easily. It also extinguishes quite quickly. Um, so you're probably not going to have any major disasters, but uh, certainly you're not going to be able to then eat the product that you're baking. Gashona says, I so appreciate being able to ask all my questions. You're welcome. You're always welcome. You know, these live shows, they... They're a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And, and sometimes we, we can't do them because the prepping, the amount of effort we have to put into them is quite exhausting. But I do love doing them. If I could do them all the time, somebody else was doing all my prepping for me and, and somebody else was doing all the, all the, the, the sort of pre-prep work and the after-prep work, it would be easier. But because uh, I love doing them, um, I continue to do them when I can, but uh, and it's it's such fun to chat to you all. But sometimes it's just it's just a little bit uh, um, time consuming, and we just haven't got the time for it. But I do love doing it. So carry on with those comments and questions. My coffee's going cold on the side. Anyone else out there like cold coffee and tea? I do. I'm I don't mind at all if my coffee or my tea goes stone cold. On the side, Maggie said earlier, chocolate cookies, all of the seven food groups. We count them: a fruit and a veggie. Yep, <laughs> this is this is a kind of uh, vegetable, five a day, Maggie. You're getting your um, your vegetable in there by way of uh, wheat. Is wheat a vegetable? Why is it all seven food groups? So it might mean the five a day veggies. All oh, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought Maggie was trying to, um, like me, justify the fact for eating chocolate chip cookies when clearly they're not healthy. But in moderation, in moderation, everything is good for you. Maybe not everything is good for you, but most things are good for you. So you can come back down again, Michelle. So Bisa Chaw says, I like iced coffee, and Raggy says, I love cold coffee. Yep, yeah, Raggy, me too. Cold coffee, cold tea. I rarely drink my tea hot. Um, I invariably find it on the side an hour after I've made it and I'm quite happy to drink it, but I do not like um, coffee made uh, or tea made with, with tepid water. It's got to be hot from the get-go. Yeah, Jashona Smith agrees as well about the coffee and tea. Got no tea towels left. <laughs> All over the place. So we've got those uh, cookies there. We are going to crank that oven up. I'm going to about to take my rice pudding out of the oven, which yeah. means I'm going to have to take my other rice pudding out of the oven. Um, right. We're all good. Give me that blue bowl. Um, a little bit of space making going on here. The rice pudding is coming out of the oven. Now this is not the rice pudding we just made, but one I made earlier. And I'm going to turn that oven up now to 180 degrees Celsius, that's about 350 Fahrenheit, because we're going to bake our cookies and they will only take 10 to 12 minutes to cook. And uh, if you're going to hang around with me till that point, um, it won't take a few moments for them to cool down enough for me to eat them anyway. <laughs> so I'm not putting in my creme caramels uh, just yet. I'm going to put them in a little bit later. You've already seen the ones I made last night. They came out beautifully. I've got a few more of those to have later on. I really urge you to try the creme caramels made with coconut cream. So, so good. And if you want to make a creme brulee, by the way, you can actually do the same sort of thing. Actually, do get rid of the bubbles if you can do creme brulee. Um, you can then, once they've set, you can put some sugar on the top. You could even use um, coconut blossom sugar, which I have here, um, which also does caramelize. And you could then get a hot torch and just uh, you can put them under a salamander grill. But you generally people use a, a, 
an oven torch and just um, caramelize the top of the sugar so you get that nice crack through into that. You don't, don't one. put the caramel at the bottom for that. No, you don't need to. You don't put the caramel on the bottom, but who, say, who says you don't have to? You can if you want, but you're not going to tip it out. Okay. Thank you very much, Kevin. Gishona, hello. Raggy, how are you, mate? I can see you're still in there. Kevin, I'm just looking at the recent uh, comments here. If I've missed any hellos, please say hello now, and I will say hi to you. Um, I like iced coffee too, uh, beats the trail, but I also like just cold coffee. And you can see here, it's the coffee I made before the show. It's probably, if I put a thermometer into it, it's, it's lukewarm at best. But I still love it. What are you giggling at? Raggy just said, Rats, I have a meeting scheduled with the War Department and I see she's back early from fire practice. Great show, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Raggy. Uh, you get on. Fight them on the bat on the on the the battlefront. <laughs> uh, beautiful. Now, my pudding, my rice pudding is ready. It has come out differently than a traditional English because actually what's happened is some of the moisture, some of the water content I can see in the coconut milk has evaporated. So we've got many more craters on the surface of this pudding. Not worried about it. I still know it's going to take delis taste delicious because I've had so many variations of this in Asia. Um, it won't look quite the same as a traditional uh, English Christmas pudding. Uh, my oven is up to temperature. The cookies rice, are going rice pudding, in. Rice pudding. What did I say? Christmas pudding. Why do I always say Christmas pudding? Yo ho ho! The cookies are going in. Now, they're a dry dough. Will I need to pat them down? I'll have a little look in about eight minutes or so. If I need to, I'll use a fork a little bit like a peanut butter cookie and I'll just push them down. But if there's enough fat content and I've allowed my flour to bloom and the sugar content is right, the cookies will flatten down by themselves. We will see. I've talked about this in the perfect chocolate chip cookie and how you can adjust your cookie recipe to make the perfect cookie for you. These cookies are going to be good. I know even before, if I taste that batter, the cookie uh, dough, it's going to it's going to taste fantastic. Do you want to put the rice pudding on to uh, that? No, I'm going to put it on to a cloth okay. so I can actually. Um, so the rice pudding is coming. We'll give it a. We're going to. We'll let it settle another five or so minutes, and then I'll serve some so that you can see very hot. what it looks like. Because right now it will burn my tongue. Now I know. Let's have a little talk about um, uh, lactose intolerance. A lot of you out there may be lactose intolerant. Uh, it's fascinating, in fact, to understand that um, we as adults, we can't digest lactose. Uh, it's, it's not something called, or, or um, uh, what is the term? Galacto, galacto, galactosemia. galactosemia? I think it's um, we can't we can't just digest the sugars from dairy products as adults. Uh, Europeans tend to have a tolerance to um, lactose. Uh, people of European um, uh, background have developed a tolerance. We still don't actually ingest and use that lactose. So there is an argument, you know, whether we should be eating that sort of thing. But actually, people of European descent. Now, which includes most uh, many of the, the the Americans and Australians here uh, can actually digest lactose, um, but we don't actually. It's, it's no benefit. It's not one of the essential amino acids that we need to take. When babies are born, you know the little um, heel prick they do. I think uh, uh, there's a name for it. But yeah, there's they do the little blood test, and one of the things they're checking for is whether or not the baby can digest um, those milk solids uh, lactose and whether they can process them if you cannot process those they can be very harmful to the development of a young child so that heel test the little blood test they do on the heel of your babies if any of you had kids you'll you'll remember the heel heel test um, they can very early on determine whether or not you your baby can digest um, because we actually can digest and use that um, amino acid when we are young many of us some can't, and then it becomes quite harmful and it causes all sorts of issues. It can blindness, brain damage, 
many different things. So it's essential that they, they find out early on if you can, uh, if a baby can't. Um, so I'm guessing that Emily Rose has been di diagnosed as, as not being able to digest. So it's not, a, it's not unusual. Um, when you're older, if you've already been um, comfortably uh, drinking milks, and don't forget, we're talking cheeses and butters, and many other products that are pr pr produced from dairy products, ice cream, for example. Um, you can carry on usually um, eating dairy products and not get any great benefit from the lactose, but your body can cope with it. It can, it can process it. When you're young, when you're a small baby, you're actually using those lactoses as part of your development. But um, So I'm guessing uh, if you've ever met a child who can't digest lactose, it's because they've been... Um, there are not many, it's quite a small number, but it's enough out there that it's so essential that we pick up on it. And uh, there are many things we can do. I, I think we've done quite a few recipes on the channel that are, are dairy-free, uh, and it is important... Um, uh, so I think what I'm trying to say is coconut milk is a, is a great substitute for a lot of those things. Coconut oils are also a great substitute. And uh, I will try to do more and more dairy-free products, uh, not at the expense of flavor. Uh, we'll still be getting the flavor. Uh, let's check those cookies. They haven't been in that long, I don't think. So Shona's asking, is, so there's no lactose in mother's milk? Yes, there is lactose in mother's milk, and that's one of the essential reasons why that test needs to be done. It's got three numbers, PKU test or something like that. All our kids had it when they were little. Yes, there is lactose in mother's milk, and if you actually have found that you, you can't digest it, then actually they do have to put those babies onto a special formula um, because they can't. Uh, the mother's milk will actually harm, harm the baby. I think I'm correct. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I, I do know a lot about food sciences. I've studied them fairly extensively, so, um, but I, I don't want to give out advice, but I'm pretty sure you'll find that they have to come onto a special formula, which includes um, no lactose, uh, so that they can... And these uh, babies, by the way, live perfectly... Uh, babies and adults live perfectly healthy lives, just got to avoid lactose. Sure. So the bacteria in cheese converts to lactose convert the lactose to lactic acid, so aged cheese does not have lactose, but young cheeses do. Right, um, Beach Trail, I, I'm not 100% sure about the, 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 uh, the ability for children particularly and, and adults who are lactose intolerant to eat mature cheeses, so I won't comment on that, but it's certainly something that people can look into. Very interested to see that um, uh, Critity, uh, Leslie, as, as she's known to me, says her husband has has, been, uh, has developed lactose intolerance at the age of 70. A lot of people actually do um, struggle to, uh, as they get older, sometimes struggle to uh, process. We, we need a certain amount of um, amino acids in our diet uh, to, to be healthy and a certain amount of fiber. And certainly lactose is one of those um, non-essential acids that we don't need in the diet. So I can imagine, yes, that, 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 that there, would be no, there would be no negative side effects from cutting out lactose from your diet. There would be nothing, you wouldn't be suddenly um, void of, of, of things. You would be missing out on some, some delicious foods, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of the Asian continents um, don't have a lot of those milks in their diet, though they actually do, of course, have mother's milk. And that's why babies can, up to a certain age, um, digest lactose and actually benefit from lactose. I forget the exact science behind it. Um, I do know, I have it in my notes somewhere, but um, it is fascinating. So, so even young Asian babies who are not used to having uh, cow's milk products in their, their, their food and don't eat um, those sort of products can digest lactose when they're babies, but they still have to be tested uh, because if they can't, it can be very, very dangerous. Um, well, actually, it can be fatal. Kevin said cow's milk has double the lactose. Uh, to mother's milk, I think it's... Oh, okay. To, to, to mother. Okay. You know, there are so many uh, is essentials that we have to get. It's mainly to, to do with getting the right balance of, of amino acids or essential um, uh, amino acids into, into your system. And I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to crack open this... Uh, You've got to do the rice pudding next, you find out that. Rice pudding. 
If Kenny Rogers says hi, and Richie Tolin Toleno says you make good and yummy food, and Kenny Rogers says what food will you be making? I'd like to see you do cooking. Kenny, I've almost finished. Let me just see if my rice pudding, just bring the camera down here, Michelle. Now, you look at that rice pudding there, and you can see the surface. If that was a, um, um, a dairy one, you'd have a flat, thick skin on the surface. This one hasn't, it's set nicely. Um, I'm gonna use this spoon, if you'll excuse me, it's got a little bit of uh, cream on there, and I'm going to get myself out a big dollop of this, uh, this rice pudding, and I know it will be super tender and super delicious. Okay, can you, oh, I'm so hungry. Get myself a teaspoon. Now, a lot of us with uh, British heritage will have this, will know and appreciate this. You can come back up to me now, Michelle. With, uh, is the camera up? With a little bit of jam. I could put raspberry jam, strawberry jam on this. I'm just gonna have it as it is, just to give you a, the, the flavor profile. It's I hope still I'm, hot. It's still hot. <laughs> Mmm. Oh, that is so good. That is absolutely delicious. Um, mm, I haven't got... I'm trying to describe it. There's an oil in here, and that's come from the coconut oils. Um, I'd go a little sweeter on this, actually. I tend to err on the side of under-sweetening things and then bringing the sugar levels up to, to where I want them. I would sweeten this a little bit more. If you're having a jam, and I'd like the sweetness to it. Mm. If I was taking a raspberry jam, okay, camera down. See how silly we used to get when we were youngsters. Take a bit of rasp, raspberry jam. Can you see that in camera? Yep. Just pop that on there. Pop your school uniform on, get back into school, and mix that raspberry jam through with your, your pudding. And that's why, back up, yeah. that's the way I like it. Mm. Then you've got all that coconut flavor. You've got those, those rice kernels have gone to almost, they've still got their shape and, and consistency, um, but they've broken down. Mm. That is so good. Now the cookies are cooking up nicely. It's about 10 minutes, I think. Camera back up, is it? Yep, back up. They're, they're doming, they're a dry mix. And you remember I said on the perfect chocolate chip cookie, you said you can adjust that by um, the different amounts of fats that you put in, um, uh, or sugars. Uh, I'm gonna push these down, they're doming quite high. So I'm gonna open the oven up, because they're looking a little bit like uh, rock cakes. And I'm just gonna push them down a little bit like you would do with a peanut butter. Got any questions there, Michelle, while I'm down here? So Amy McCollum's just tuned in, so happy to see these recipes, and I'm so excited to try them. Thank you for doing lactose-free recipes. You're welcome. So Amy? Amy. So I'll just push those cookies down because they're very high with just a fork. They're still going to be because there's a, a self-rising flour, a leavening agent in there. Is still going to be now. I'm surprised a little bit, and it will vary from uh, brand to brand. There's quite a lot of, of coconut oil left in here, but it is delicious. Michelle, do you want to try? Yeah, That's funny cookies, yum dingity. That is good. So, we've got two recipes now, two successful lactose free recipes, and a third one about to come out. Man, we're having fun here today. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're gonna try this. Don't forget, I'm gonna put those ingredients out on a PDF and send them across to you, Steve, so that um, uh, Emily Rose can enjoy them. I think she's probably, is she about two or three years old now? Uh, I did see some photographs of her. She's a very, very, very pretty young lady. Um, so I hope she enjoys these. Michelle says raspberry, my favourite. It's my favourite too. Raspberry is Michelle's favourite, and it is 
my favorite i think i do like the blackberry jams as well and the black currant jams you know i think i talk in a, a video that we're doing um possibly this weekend and i'll refer to jellies in in america you call your jams jellies so you say a pb and j a peanut butter and jelly we don't use jellies our jellies are called jams um, but they can be called jellies if they're clear and they don't have any pips so if they're a strain jam we would call that a jelly uh, and I was looking particularly for a jelly for a recipe I was doing and in Australia we just don't have any jellies or strained clear jellies it's, it's so difficult to find them yes the choice is strawberry homemade no Stra I don't like strawberry jam no, I'm not a big fan of strawberry jam. It, I mean, strawberries don't have a lot of pectin in them, so they're very tricky to actually set. We talked about jam in last week's. They're very difficult to set, so you often have to put um, lemon rind or lemon pips into them to get them to set. And Bisa Trail, Michelle and I eat both. If we buy a strawberry jam, it often is one that gets left behind. Raspberry jam, absolutely love. Red currant jams, uh, blackberry jams. I think uh, like most jams apart from strawberry jam. I'm not a big fan of fig jam actually, which uh, is what we yeah, talked about fig. last week with our it's good okay. buddy Ed. Uh, you don't mind fig jams. I don't overly, again, figs don't have a high pectin level. They don't make naturally good jams, so they do need to, uh, tinkering with. And quite often, unless you break those figs up really small, you just end up with a great big sort of lump of fig coming out onto your toast or onto your muffin and then no real sort of sauce and jelly. So I'm not a big fan of fig jams, although I do like some of the fig and lime jams and fig and lemon jams, orange peel. They can be quite nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain you could make a good fig jam if indeed you made the effort to dice up your figs nice and small. Bisa Troll says we call it jam if it has the pulp. Yes, we, we call everything jam. Um, although we do sometimes call a jelly, but a jelly can quite often be served at, at um, main courses like uh, meals. So you can have jelly like a cranberry jelly with your chicken, uh, cranberry sauce or cranberry jellies uh, work. And also we can make uh, mint jellies, which are basically set in an aspect very, th very thick. It's a, a it, it's there's no one rule about this. I'm just letting you know the way we are jam. We have jams in our supermarket we don't have jellies if you go to the u.s it's, they talk about jellies we would always have i grew up on peanut butter and jam sandwiches but i always have to refer to it as a peanut butter and jelly because most it's an american thing i'm pretty sure and and therefore they invented it give them their juice if you want to claim that gastronomical um achievement which is actually fantastic i almost grew up on pb and j but pb and jam so Kenny Ward just says, bye Steve, time to log out now. Bye Kenny, sorry it's a long show. I know people will come in. If you're coming in later on, comment. Let us know what you think of the show. Those cookies are getting very close to cooked. So Shona Smith said, that's the way my mum taught me. Jellies are clear, jams have the fruit. And Kevin says, jellies produce jam, crush fruit. Yeah. But I think, agreeing. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, they're, they're all the same. They're all delicious. I'm trying to think actually which are my favorite jams. There are actually other jams that I'm. Apricot jam, I like. Apricot jams. I love apricot jams. Like gooseberry jam. I was thinking gooseberry jam just then, yeah. So they were like a hinge and bracket. <laughs> okay, here are the cookies. Come down here, Michelle. Look how beautiful they are. Never made them before. Cookies are not complicated to make. Um, and what's beautiful about these is they are completely dairy free you've got a little uh, crank handle you show a little spatula i could just get, lift these off okay, are we down on camera at the moment yeah. look at these they're just a little bit moist i should probably let them um cool down just a little bit before i try and lift them off i actually am going to we've got a wonderful toasted coconut on the top we've got chocolate chips inside up to me and turn the oven off I think we've invented a new cookie. Mm -hmm. I certainly haven't um, come across this particular cookie. Give us a name for them. Chocolate chips, coconuts, a dairy free. Anyone want to come up with a cool name? I'll probably make these actually on my channel as an independent video. It'd be, they look, if they taste as good as they, they look. We're still talking about jams. Kevin says, I love gooseberry jam. And Sharon says, pineapple jam is really good too. Goose, gooseberries, gooseberries are one of my 
all times her childhood favorite fruits to go in a crumble. Now, um, or what, what are the American cobblers? Mm. Like, a, like a, a gooseberry cobbler or a gooseberry crumble. Not with other fruits though. I like it just on, I want those gooseberries to stand alone. They are such a good fruit. And you get dark and light gooseberries. We used to have um, a neighbor that had a big gooseberry patch in, our, in France. Gooseberries are really hard to pick. They're so spiky, so thorny. And we used to put absolutely loads of them. Um, but they, they, you come away with sores and, and, and uh, little spikes in your hand all over. But they're worth it. So just come down here, Michelle. They had the dark gooseberries as well, didn't they? they yeah. Like so I'm just there. taking these off. They, they've only taken, what, maybe? 15, I reckon. They were 30 15. seconds or so. Oh, were they in 15? Yeah. They've only taken about uh, just under a minute to firm up enough that I can lift them off off the board don't they look absolutely gorgeous now i'm gonna not run and eat one of these too quickly uh whoops yep underneath the color looks good as well a little golden brown that's your way of checking the underneath that's my way uh, yes that was deliberate deliberate little flip <laughs> thank you michelle <laughs> covering my back none of the um Okay, Beast the Troll said there's a bakery in town that makes a chocolate chip coconut and macadamia nut cookie. They call their, their royal cookies. Okay, beautiful. Are we up at me now? Oh no, looking at those lovely cookies. <laughs> I'm sweating, man. I'm so hot. I've got, I've got my waistcoat on. It's probably going to be another sort of 30 degree day, probably in the sort of 80s, the mid 80s Fahrenheit. Uh, it's going to be another hot day. And uh, I'm baking in an oven. Not baking in an oven, yeah. but I'm baking in an oven, so to speak. So those cookies, they come out pretty well. That's three recipes. Um, of the three, I'm absolutely in love with the creme caramels. I think they came out second to none. I did say to Steve and Emily Rose, by the way, I was thinking of doing a, a custard tart, a traditional custard tart or um, a pasta. Pasta de nata, pastel de nata, the Portuguese custard tarts. Um, I didn't do it, Steve, because I didn't really have time to do the pastry, but you could do the same, pretty much the same ingredients, and, and set those in a little uh, uh, pastry tart and make some custard tarts. It would work just as well. I would sprinkle a little bit of coconut sugar or coconut blossom sugar on top, or, or any sugar for that matter. You're not. Uh, sugar intolerant it's it's dairy but uh, coconut sugar would just lift those a little bit so kevin says toasted coconut chocolate chip cookies and the show smith said how about princess cookies princess cookies what are princess cookies well instead of royal cookies yours are now princess cookies they're yeah. giving you names for your cookies oh yes <laughs> i'm gonna pop my um i'm gonna pop my other creme caramels in the oven to finish off and I want, um, how long for those 30 minutes? Hey Google, give me 30 minutes. Oh, she didn't wake up for me, or did she? She's gone to sleep. I oh, know, she has. Started. I, uh, I turned the sound off. So how would you say that's swap, sir, J? <laughs> About critters. Uh, Swatsade. Hello, Steve. Um, I love your channel and uh, sharing your recipes and homemade pizza is incredible. Thank you very much. S W T Sade or Sade. <laughs> um, Amy, Princess cookies are cute. That sounds good. Um, now, how long have we been going? I have no idea at all. Now, the only thing I would say, I do like cookies with a hot drink. I have to make a hot tea. But I'm not going to bother because I'm just going to taste these cookies and then I'm going to leave them with you, have a, a last few moments uh, chit chat and then we're going to close. Thank you very much, uh, Leslie. Yes, if you want to hit the share, I, I rarely actually remember to do so. If you want to hit the share button below the video, there's a little um, icon, share it across on your Facebook and let people see. If you're sweet enough to come across and support me on uh, Patreon, um, that would be great too, and that goes the, that money goes towards helping Michelle and I do what we do and what, what we love to do, and we get some wonderful people across there, including our lovely Leslie. Cookie time. 
they're still hot, but they're firm enough. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to give this a, a try now. We'll test whether it's sweet enough, whether it's chocolate chippy enough, whether it's got that coconut flavour. You can see the coconut, um, uh, the desiccated, it's not desiccated coconut, it's actually a shredded coconut. Desiccated coconut would work, but I've got to find these shredded coconut. So let's go. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. They need to firm up a little bit more. Now, you'll see why when I do a, a video that I tend to interlace some photographs when I've done a taste test because I don't want to spend five or ten minutes talking to you on camera trying to clear my mouth of all the delicious food that I'm eating. So uh, I'm just going to get all that out there, get the flavours, let them hit my palate and taste. That is absolutely delicious. There is almost no difference between that and uh, a dairy-based butter cookie. It's soft, it's melting in your mouth. The flavors are great. Again, I would highly encourage giving this a try. See, if you can't eat dairy, you can still have fun. Hmm. Cook a little bit longer. Because the cookie is quite thick, I'm a little bit soft in the center. I think I might have gone another, probably only about two minutes, maybe three minutes, just keep an eye on that coconut. Make sure the coconut doesn't blacken or go dark. Um, and and they, could, they could be just about perfect. You could have pushed them down more. I could have pushed them down more, but it was a fairly dense dough, so I was going for that, um, I was going for that sort of uh, uh, peanut butter. Soft and chewy. Soft and chewy. That's exactly, Michelle, thank you very much. <laughs> Michelle, come around here, say goodbye to everybody. We're going to wrap up. Here she is. Hello, goodbye. My gorgeous Michelle, <laughs> she's doing all the work in the background for you. She's actually not, she's sat on a chair there doing nothing. I'm just eating. <laughs> she's an absolute gem. Um, uh, do you want to read that out for me, Michelle? So, oh, that's, um, just go through and check if there's any questions I we haven't think, answered. I don't think I've missed any. If there's any questions you've asked and I haven't answered them, you can throw them up now just before we go and I'll get through and answer them. I've got those beautiful creme caramels. I'll tell you what we do. Let's just, let's just puncture the side of this creme caramel this time. And just pushing it down with the flats of my fingers, just so that the creme caramel breaks away from the side. Get myself another little white plate. Leslie said, you said, oh yeah, call them oh yeah cookies. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> Give it a little bash. Is no. it going to break? I think it is. Again. There, I think I just heard it. Can you see the? Oh, camera down. Oh, camera down. Camera down. Yep. Yes. So this time I haven't cut round with the knife. I've just given it a little break around that seal. See that beautiful caramel sauce coming out there? Is it good angle on the camera, yeah, Michelle? Yeah. And hopefully, voila! Look at that. Now that's even got a darker creme caramel on the outside. And because Michelle, back up to me, because Michelle Because I ate the other one. Because <laughs> she finished the last one. I'm gonna end the show. I'm gonna end the show on this beautiful coconut milk, dairy free. Can't see your thumbs in the way. Oh my thumb's in the way. My delicate, slim little thumb is in the way. These are so good. Hmm. Share the love, share this video, have a wonderful week and weekend and we will see you very shortly, I've got a couple of videos if I get them edited in time for this weekend, some really good videos, I'm actually going with a slightly different format on one of the videos so I'd like you to um, give me some feedback on that, it's a, it's a slightly longer format so if I don't get it done for this weekend it'll be the next weekend and I'll, I'll let you know. Love you all, be good. Do you know how to stop it, yeah. Michelle? Yeah, you ready? <laughs> See you in the next video. Take care.